Well, I'm hoping you'll be able to hear me on this windy day. I'm actually out walking in my neighborhood doing my morning fast walk and I came across this house whose homeowners I had helped, oh, a couple of years ago with their front yard. It's a darling little Tudor bungalow in my old neighborhood of 1930s houses. And I thought I would just do a little garden tour of their house. Now, here are a couple of appointments that we put in. There are street side, two beautiful, I believe, they're October Glory maples. So in the fall, they're absolutely gorgeous. And we put them closer to the street so they wouldn't do any damage to the house. And I also, here's a design tip, I also put them in direct line with this other tree that was already existing that was across their drive. So you can see that it kind of frames her house and makes her property look a little bit more grand and it's just beautiful in the fall. I love street side trees. And then we put large tree wells around them. And these are maybe four years old, four or five years old, but they're a great tree for Oklahoma. They have performed beautifully, and I love the symmetry of the two of them lined up. So over here, she had an area like so many of you, underneath this large mature tree in the corner. It's a large Chinese pistache, I believe, and she couldn't get any grass to grow underneath it. So we wanted to accentuate the arched windows and repeat the parabola of that curve. So that's why she has curved bed lines. And what we did was just create an area underneath this tree that gives her some shelter and privacy from her neighbor. We planted some Nellie Stevens hollies and then she wanted a little garden bench. And I think maybe I recommended this one. At any rate, she uh, ordered it last year and it's aging nicely. And then we put some stepping stones and then the rest of it is just very, very easy. She already had existing English ivy that was growing in here. So we just allowed it to continue to mature. And then she put in some plum yews towards the back because they are a wonderful evergreen for shade. And then we continued the Nellie Stevens onto the other side. And she had some existing stones that we strategically placed to add a little bit of interest without being too busy. And then she has a spot of sun right here. So we did my get a top of the bird bath kind of thing and she planted it with some sun lovers for this spot that gets oh, maybe around noon and late afternoon shade and then she had some window boxes that were showing some distress but we fortified them so that the lining was a little bit more substantial and they weren't constantly drying out. And this is, she faces north, so this is a very shady location. I believe that Japanese maple was already there. And we worked some pruning magic on it. And then she had some existing Yopan hollies, and this is a boxwood substitute, you guys. Very tough. And we did a rhythm and a repetition of these dwarf yopon hollies in globe form across the front of her house. And then later, because it looked incomplete without them, we added a couple more and extended that bed to the other side. And those are still growing up, but before, in any time, in no time at all, they will be as large 
as their counterpoints. And then we added some jewelry with that address marker. I love the tailored quality of the front of her house. Those are two blue atlas cedars that provide some vertical interest on either side of the front door, and I believe those were there. And then we planted uh, some boxwoods in the window boxes, again with a repeat of that English ivy. And then just because it was easy and a nice textural contrast, I think we either planted or left in some monkey grass and then in that back corner, which is also very shady, and to illuminate it and brighten it up a little bit, there is a variegated holly. So that's nice. So it's just real, and she does plant uh, tulips and pansies in the spring. It's just a really charming home. It's just the two of them. They have a pool in the back. And it's just a wonderful, darling little bungalow in my neighborhood. So, on the spur of the moment, I thought you guys might like a little tour of, let's see if I can zoom out or in, a little tour of this darling bungalow. Don't you love that window? The other thing that's good about this landscape is it doesn't, you can see the charming facade of the front of the house. It doesn't hide behind overgrown bushes and the landscape itself serves to enhance the property and the architecture of the house and the design elements, but it doesn't hide them. And you can see from that marker there, this house was built in 1935. I believe mine was built in 1932. I love the contrast of the white against the stone. And then the stone, because it's already existing in her architecture, she can repeat with the boulders um, there in her landscape. And the bench also speaks the same language as the age of her house. Hopefully she won't mind me doing this little tour of her home. I help her periodically when she's got questions. And it's just a really tailored, lovely, low maintenance landscape. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. A little house on my walk. <laughs>